Your Excellency, it is such an immense honor to join you today to celebrate International Women's Day, a day when women and men who work for gender equality are honored. This year's theme, Digital All, Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality, recognizes and celebrates the women and girls who are championing the advancement of transformative technology and digital education. Today, the national skyline is brighter with many more colorful minds of women as CEOs in boardrooms, chairpersons, chiefs, governors, and legislators. We recognize the efforts of some of our women in technology and in the digital space, such as Agnes Gadaya, the country director for East Africa at Google, Catherine Moraga at the helm of Microsoft Engineering Hub, Africa Development Center, Candy Derito, who is the head of misrepresentation at Meta, Ori Okolo, a venture capitalist in tech and a board member at Safaricom, amongst others. We have in this space compassionate trailblazers. I would like to thank you, Your Excellency, for your relentless efforts in upholding and promoting women's rights in the country. Your presence here today clearly demonstrates your commitment towards advancing gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. You are an inspiration. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, in line with this year's International Women's Day theme, I wish to affirm that technology has provided immense opportunities for all in this digital era. It has allowed people to communicate more efficiently, access government services, and market their goods online through e-commerce, provide a new pathway for entrepreneurial ent empowerment and self-education and participation in decision-making. Technology, therefore, provides a great platform to reverse the perennial exclusion of women from public life while strengthening their agency. With Kenya being the trailblazer in Africa of internet and smartphone penetration, the innovation and digital transformation has provided opportunities for women and girls in the country to access opportunities in education using virtual platforms, access information on their well-being, such as health-related inquiries, and importantly, offer a platform to find employment, career information, and entrepreneurship opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, and your excellencies, I wish to affirm the Council of Governors' commitment and contribution towards advancing inclusive innovation and technology. Since devolution, we have recorded significant success in a number of programs, projects, and interventions that have had an impact on women and girls, men and boys. In my capacity as a chairperson of the Council of Governors, allow me to highlight a few initiatives by county governments aimed at promoting inclusion in innovation and technology. Some counties have established localized county innovation weeks, which are platforms for showcasing innovation development by women, youth, and persons with disabilities in various sectors. Women who constitute a majority of smallholder farmers are instrumental in agricultural production and food security. In the previous financial year, county governments allocated 35.5 billion of shillings of their budgets to agricultural development. And as a result, counties have made considerable progress in advancing technology within the sector through facilitating access to credit and extension services, provision of improved inputs and modernization of practices, such as hybrid seeds, concentrated feeds and fertilizer, pesticides, machinery, and irrigation. In Kirinyaga, for example, the Wazesha program has been able to facilitate access to quality farm inputs and market for farmers' produce. Majority of our farmers in our counties are women. Our focus is now on sustainability of the program and commercializing agriculture by leveraging on innovation and technologies for the digitization of extension services, aggregation, agro-processing, and export-oriented value addition through cooperative societies. Counties have also successfully developed and implemented GIS-based county spatial plan
which ha has special plans which have been handy for mapping, collection, collation, synthesis and analysis of data to inform thinking and planning at the county level. This has been critical in the identification of suitable areas for suitable agricultural activity and, and agro-processing. County governments have driven education reforms by offering digital learning opportunities per the new competency-based curriculum by ensuring digital integration to learning. Moreover, counties continue to support mentorship for girls in vocational training centers in a bid to encourage the uptake of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics-related course courses and careers. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, despite progress made in legislation and policy formulation, gender inequality, particularly innovation, continues to persist. The exorbitant internet costs and the wage gap in this field that is still largely male-dominated are some of the challenges still impeding women from fully participating and benefiting in technology, which needs to be addressed by both levels of government. As we celebrate the positive impact of technology, we must also acknowledge the challenges that come with it, particularly in the form of cyberbullying. In Kenya, women leaders have been particularly vulnerable to cyberbullying, we can take many forms, including harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence. Early this week, Your Excellency, I was honored to take part in a campaign where women came together to raise their voices against cyberbullying. The campaign organized by Eco Network Africa, led by trailblazer Dr. Jennifer Riria, calls all of us to stop cyberbullies now and is aimed at creating public awareness, initiating relevant laws, and mobilizing support towards calling out cyberbullying for the crime that it is. Studies have shown that up to 70% of women who use the internet have endured cyber violence, and that women are 27 more times likely than men to be harassed online. More than one in every five women in Kenya, Your Excellency, have experienced cyberbullying. Your Excellency, it is critical to note that we cannot achieve true gender equality and women's empowerment without everyone having access to technology and innovation. And therefore, we have, as county governments, put our efforts and our resources to ensure that we breach this digital divide. I want to draw your attention to the need for gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls, not only on this International Women's Day, but every day of the year. Gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but an underpinning of prosperous modern economy that provides sustainable, inclusive growth. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, I wish to express my gratitude to all stakeholders present for all the efforts towards the achievement of equal rights for women. Progress of women and girls is progress for all of us. Giving priority to women is not an option. It is a necessity. Giving more opportunity to women, besides being a matter of rights, it's also a manifestation of good economic sense. On this International Women's Day, let us recognize as women, let us empower them, let us protect them. As we said this week, we are women. As you have heard from Weshimiwa Alice, we are here to stay and we are not going anywhere. Happy International Women's Day. With those many remarks, allow me, Your Excellency, we've taken a lot of your time to invite Waziri Aisha Jumwa to come and make her remarks. Karibu Aisha.